two, one, and we are now live. Commission Chair, if you could call the meeting to order. Yes, I welcome everybody. We call this meeting of the Arapahoe County Planning Commission of July 21st, 2020 to order. And we will now call the roll. Jason? Chair Rick? Yes. Chair Pro Tem Latsis? Yes. This is Gabriel. Commissioner Brockelman? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Save? Yes. Commissioner Woolman? Yes. Good evening, commissioners, staff, citizens, and guests. I'm Jason Reynolds with Arapahoe County Planning, and I will be serving as the moderator for this evening's online meeting of the Planning Commission. We are streaming this meeting on our website, arapahogov.com. This agenda will be managed in the same way it would have been managed for a regular in-person meeting. You may stream the meeting on our website, or if you wish to participate, you may call in. Please note that the website broadcast is delayed by about 20 to 30 seconds. So if you would like to speak regarding any public hearing items, please use the call-in number. To participate live via phone, call 719 Five six nine five zero four eight, and then when prompted, enter the conference ID, which is six eight six five two zero four nine eight, followed by the pound sign. I'll repeat that for you. You can listen and participate live over the phone if you call seven one nine five six nine five zero four eight. And when prompted, enter the conference ID, which is 686-520-498, followed by the pound sign. All of the presentation PowerPoints are available on our website, so even if you participate by telephone, you can still follow along with the presenters. If you are here for the Sky Ranch General Development Plan or the Sky Ranch Preliminary Plat, those hearings will not be held this evening due to improper public noticing. We are going to schedule those items for a future Planning Commission hearing after proper public notice. So if you're here for Sky Ranch, you can look for it on a future Planning Commission agenda. We are unable to accept any testimony this evening. Chair Rick, please proceed with the approval of the minutes. Okay. We have one set of minutes to approve from our previous July 7th, 2020 Planning Commission meeting. If there are any changes to the minutes, please include those in your motion and I will accept a motion to approve the minutes. Chairman Rick, I move that we approve the July 7th, 2020 minutes with one change. There is a typo on page five um the paragraph starts out assistant county attorney bob hill it's the third line down the sentence began begins he explained the word should be the the there's an extra e in it it's just a typo Okay, we have a motion made by Commissioner Woolman with one correction noted. Is there a second to the motion? Chair Rick, this is Catherine Latsis. Uh, I second. The motion has been seconded by Commissioner Latsis. Is there any discussion? Okay, Mr. Reynolds, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Brockelman. Aye. Commissioner Miller. Aye. Commissioner Saul? Aye. Commissioner Save? Aye. Commissioner Woolman? Aye. Chair Pro Tem Latsis? Aye. Chair Rick? Aye. The minutes are approved on a vote of seven to zero. 
As mentioned earlier, the Sky Ranch cases, the proposed general development plan and preliminary plat did not meet the public notice requirements for a public hearing. So those two cases will be scheduled on a future agenda and we are unable to accept testimony on the Sky Ranch cases this evening. So we'll skip over that part of the agenda as originally posted. The public is invited to participate in the other public hearings this evening. And if you would like to comment on the public hearing items, that remain, please call 719-569-5048 and when prompted, enter the conference ID, which is 686-520-498, followed by the pound sign. I will call on individual telephone numbers after the Planning Commission Chair opens the public hearing. Each speaker will have three minutes to address the Planning Commission on their topic of choice after the staff presentation. Okay, we have our first case tonight, Copperleaf Kitty Academy Final Development Plan, used by Social Review. It's case number FDP 20-001. Uh, the Final Development Plan and used by Special Review, Kat Hammer with Arapahoe County Planning. is our staff presenter, Mrs. Hammer, please begin. Good evening, Commissioners. Kat Hammer, Arapahoe County Planning. Um, let me just share my screen here. As noted earlier by this uh, chair, the first slide here indicates the name of the proposal as well as the um, case number. The second slide shows a site plan of the proposal. The applicant EG3 development in part with Copperleaf Commercial Investors, the owner, are proposing a 9,972 square foot single story child care facility, which also includes um, a 5,000 square foot outdoor play area, associated parking, sidewalks, and landscaping. On slide three, um, you will see a map that is showing the vicinity and the adjacent uses of the proposed site. Just north of the site is um, land that's located in the jurisdiction of Aurora and it is used for commercial uses. Just east of the site is a parcel that is approved for a senior housing plan. South of the site is two family residents and west of the site is a Starbucks coffee shop. On page four, um, the slide is here to help um, you guys understand the process of how the county is reviewing this. The Copperleaf PDP plan is um, requires a special exemption use or a use by special review for a child care facility. County staff has looked at this and determined that a use by special review is more appropriate than a special exception use. A USR requires review and decision by the Board of County Commissioners at a public hearing, where an FDP requires review at a public hearing by the Planning Commission and the BOCC with decision by the BOCC. Under the, oh, let me go back there. Under the Copperleaf PDP um, development agreement, the applicant is permitted to either process this as a USR or an FDP, and the FDP is the process we will use moving forward. A little background on page five, you will see a snippet of the PDP, which indicates the use is, or the parcel is located in use area M, where child care facilities are permitted with approval of an FDP or a USR. Slide six is a slide that indicates how the proposal meets the comprehensive plan. It is designated, the site is designated as urban, pardon me, urban residential in the comprehensive plan, and the proposal is in conformance with at least four of the comprehensive plan goals, as shown on slide six. Slide seven talks about um, the criteria required by the LDC for approval of a USR or an FDP. As provided in the staff report, then um, there are nine review criteria and staff feels that the applicant and the proposal meets um, the criteria for approval. Um, slide eight discusses the applicant's request for a parking variation. Per the LDC, um, the applicant is permitted to submit a request for a reduction of parking for up to 10% of what is required. 
Um, staff is in support of what the applicant is proposing. And on page nine, you will see a chart that indicates the parking for this proposal. The PDP was approved um, when the 2004 parking requirements were in place. At that time, the requirements would require the requirements for parking would require the applic applicant to include 55 spaces for this use. Since 2004, the code, um, the county did adopt a new code which had different parking requirements for a daycare facility. Um, the 2019 LDC requires 40 parking spots for this type of use. The applicant is requesting that the Planning Commission consider the 2019 parking requirements as well as a 5% reduction from that, those requirements, totaling 38 parking spots. Um, the applicant has indicated, as you can see on slide 10, that there are a number of reasons why they believe that the site does not need the 55 or the 40 parking stalls as required by our code, but the applicant will be able to um, go in more detail about their argument. Slide seven or slide 11 indicates the external referral comments and anything that hasn't been resolved. Tri-County Health did ask the applicant to include a shade structure in the play area. Um, at that time, the applicant is not sure what's going to go in that play area. So as a condition of approval, staff is recommending that um, a shade structure be shown on the building plans. Staff, slide 12 indicates staff's finding and recommendations as to why we are why I am in support of this proposal. Um, considering the findings and other information provided herein, staff slide 13 shows um, the conditions of approval that the staff is recommend, rent, recommending and also draft motions for approval. Slide 14 shows draft motions for denial or continue continuance of this case. I stand for any questions if you have any and the applicant will present if you do not. Kat, could you describe how wide the sidewalk will be and will it connect to sidewalks that had come up at previous hearings? Will it connect to any existing sidewalks? So we have asked the applicant, I believe they are showing on their site plan a connection to, um, you can see on slide two on the site plan, they are showing a connection to the Starbucks to the west of the site. And how wide is that? I believe it is five feet, which meets our minimum standards, but I'll ask the applicant to confirm that. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? We will go through the... Kat, are you completed your presentation? Yes, I will be running the slide for my applicant, John, who is with TCI Capital representing the applicant. Okay, we will oh. ask each member of the Planning Commission now if they have any questions for staff. Commissioner Brockelman? I only have one question and I'm trying to follow the, all of the parking calculations. You know, there's three different tables here. So what was finally decided on the number of required parking spaces? Commissioner, um, I'd be happy to answer that. So we, the, the Applicant is proposing 38 parking spots, which is a 5% reduction from our current parking requirements for a child care facility. So I bring up the 2014 LDC because that was the LDC that was in place at the time of the PDP approval. And the PDP approval document says the parking should meet the 2004 LDC. Okay, all right. So. So it is at 40 spaces now. So there's or proposing 38. Is that that where we're at at this point? Is they're asking for just 38 parking spaces? So if we have 20 staff and two administration, that's 22 out of the 38. So that gives us 16 parking spaces for um, parents. Is that correct? I will ask the applicant to address that question because they did provide the parking study and I think they'd be better suited to answer that question. Okay, thank you. No okay. further. 
<laughs> Any questions from Mr. Miller? Yeah, is there a uh, is there another daycare facility nearby? Yes, I do. I did process another case for a daycare facility just to the east of the site on the other side of the proposed um, senior care facility. That application was approved, but it we have not received final documents for that application. Does that answer your question, Mr. Miller? Yes, thank you. Commissioner Saul. No questions. Commissioner Suave. Commissioner. Sorry. Roman? Oh, Lynn, go ahead. Yeah, I, I didn't know if you heard. I didn't take it off mute. I have no questions at this time. OK, Commissioner Woman. None at this time. And Chair Pro Tem Latsis? No questions at this time. OK, we will then hear from the applicant about their proposal. One more thing, Chair. I did want to mention that this um, this proposal was posted in the newspaper, the villager, July 2nd, and all the other notice requirements have been met. So the um, Planning Commission does have jurisdiction to proceed. And okay. on that note, I will ask um, John to begin his presentation. Hi, uh, this is John Strzalka from EG3 Development. Uh, thank you for your time tonight. Uh, Kat, could you go to the first slide, please? Yes, I, I'm seeing the first slide right now. There might be a little bit of lag, but that's that's what I'm seeing on my end. Okay. Or maybe this is the first slide. <laughs> Okay, uh, that that's our uh, one of the four of the one of the properties that we recently uh, developed for Kitty Academy. Uh, this was delivered in 2019. It's a school in Orlando, Florida, that has uh, 23 parking spaces, uh, similar size, um, and has been in operation for a little over a year at this point. Um, Kat, would you be able to go to the second slide, please? Thank yes. you. Okay, so um, we are developing for Kitty Academy, uh, which is a, um, a, a 250 unit uh, uh, educational uh, facility that uh, provides uh, daycare for young children and prepares them for, uh, for STEM and, and other educational sources. Um, the, this this uh, site is here to uh, you know help the uh, rapidly expanding community in the area. Um, per corporate policy, uh, this is not a drop-off location. This is a question that we have fairly often. Uh, parents do have to park their cars and drop their children off. Um, that is usually uh, a very quick process. Um, on a corporate average, it's it's typically somewhere between two and five minutes. Um, we've taken a, a conservative stance and assume that sometimes these take about 10 minutes. Um, these drop-offs happen in a staggered way. This is not a school uh, where you have, um, you know, early morning and afternoon uh, heavy traffic. This, uh, the, the peak times here that you're typically seeing are around between 12 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon uh, for either drop-offs or pickups. Um, additionally, uh, you know, this, uh, this property uh, has very substantial, uh, it's really over parked for our purposes. Um, typically, we have approximately 22 to 28 parking spaces on our other developments uh, that have been in operation uh, for six months to over a year. Um, this particular site has very good circulation um, on, you know, uh, East Quincy Circle. Uh, as Kat may have mentioned in her report, uh, there is a deceleration lane that's going on on Piccadilly as well, uh, which will help with traffic circulation in the area. Um, from, from our perspective, uh, the, there is a very substantial amount of, um, uh, of dual children households. It's approximately 30% on corporate average amongst those 250 locations. They come together. 
Um, additionally, uh, approximately at least 15% of the staff either carpools or comes from alternative means uh, to go to work uh, at the site. So uh, from our perspective uh, and from the corporate perspective, um, we are very, very um, you know, cognizant of parking. It's very important for people to be able to get into and out of things quickly, otherwise the location won't be successful. Um, so um, for this particular site, uh, our, our proposed parking, we feel, is, is more than adequate. Uh, Kat, would you be able to do the next slide, please? Yes. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> the last two slides that we have um, really uh, focus on the uh, the, the, the design of the building and the landscaping. Uh, this will be built to a very attractive standard um, and also be very cognizant of Copper Leaf's uh, landscaping standards. So it will be um, you know, something that will provide ample shade for the children um, as obviously some of these trees matures and the landscaping matures. And as we spoke about previously, I know this is not part of, it was not really part of the civil plans, but um, the, there will be shade structures in the, in the playground um, that, that have been included as part of our building plans, which uh, we have just recently finalized. So Kat, if you want to go to the next slide. Yes. Yeah. And then regarding the sidewalks, um, the, the proposed site plan should be showing up on your screen now. Uh, that, there's a five foot sidewalk that runs along East Quincy Circle that connects to the Starbucks. Um, additionally, we should point out that the whole building, uh, the whole perimeter of the building and the playground is fenced. Um, it's a very attractive, as you can see in the existing buildings that we showed, it's an attractive wrought iron fencing. It provides a lot of safety for the children. Um, these facilities are extremely high tech with cameras and monitoring systems and um, uh, weeder access control doors and things like that. So uh, there, are, there are no cases of children you know, running into the street or anything like that. And again, going back to the tenant's commitment to safety, um, you know, the, the, this is again a drop off location so there's no children um, you know, maneuvering around the parking lot without parental control. Yeah, and additionally, just given the size of the parking field and the um, really the abundance of spaces, there's really no, we don't foresee any stacking um, on this property like you would, again, a school or something like that. Uh, the staggered drop-offs and, um, and, and the pretty sizable location of, of the parking field um, creates an issue where traffic circulation is, is really done well here. Um, I think that's really the, the really the, the gist of our presentation. Kat, if you want to move to the next slide, it shows our landscaping plan a little bit further. Um, obviously, we don't have color um, uh, colors on this, but uh, you know this provides really uh, a pretty well detail of, of, of the amount of shrubbery and the trees that are going in. Um, we really like to create a um, kind of a very nice environment for the children. Um, landscaping is a, a top priority for the tenant, um, and you know having that kind of um, greenery is is uh, is important. And this obviously uh, has been matching the copper leaf uh, plan, um, and will um, you know and and will think we we think will provide a, a very attractive building. Uh, Kat, the next slide has our contact information, and I think at this point we'd be open to answering any questions you might have. Are there any questions from the Planning Commission? Yes, this is Commissioner Latsis. Um, hello. What is your capacity for this facility for, for the students? It's going to be 158 kids at peak capacity. Okay, thank you. I have a question regarding um, 
access from the Starbucks over to the Academy. You had mentioned that there's fencing all around. So it wouldn't be easy if someone wanted to just from the Starbucks wanted to kind of park um, by the school. They couldn't just walk across a little strip um, and go right next door to the Starbucks then. Is that correct? Well, that, that would be pretty difficult. Um, there's a, the drive through to the Starbucks is directly to the west of, of our site. Um, additionally, there's a lot of landscaping there. The fence is, is around the, the building and the playground. Um, it's not on the, uh, the area connecting to or abutting the Starbucks. Okay, because that's, that's, I couldn't really tell from, it's a really small size <laughs> view that I'm looking at right now, so I couldn't really tell how that, that layout um, was designed for that. But, you know, that would be my only concern, obviously, is that there would be some overflow from Starbucks, because everybody knows, you know, in the morning, people like to get their Starbucks before they head out to, um, to work. And if their parking was fill, full, um, the overflow may impact your guys' parking. Um, well, I don't foresee that. I mean, the, the Starbucks, um, you know, really in terms of what they have should have adequate parking for its own parcel. Um, there's no reciprocal access that we're aware of. Um, that, you know, again, that's one of the reasons why we have the sidewalk, I think, on, on uh, East Quincy Circle, uh, obviously, because there's an existing sidewalk there that we're looking to tie into. but. Um, you know, we're not looking to be in a situation where, uh, you know, people would be crossing over there. Additionally, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of landscaping and shrubbery in between both of the, in, in between both of those spaces there on the setbacks. So, um, you know, that's, that's a pretty big impediment, especially once these shrubs um, get six months of maturity into them. Okay, thank you. Yep. This is Commissioner Save, and I just have a, a question about the parking. I was just wondering, um, does the site plan not allow for the 40 uh, spaces, or are you requesting 38 just because you think you don't need it? Could you elaborate a little bit on that for me, please? Well, first of all, yeah, we, we don't feel that we need it at all. I, I, to give a frame of reference, uh, we, have, we have a couple schools that, actually more than a couple, four of them that, not schools, daycares, that have um, uh, much higher capacity, somewhere between 175 to 200 children. Um, and the peak one that we have has about 30 parking spaces. We actually did present the plan initially uh, that had, I think, 41 parking spaces, but we had to insert uh, the landscaping uh, islands that are shown on the proposed site plan. Uh, I believe it would be slide four um, of of, of our presentation, uh, which I think, yeah, is showing right now. So that uh, that eliminated those parking spaces. Okay, thank you. Yes. Could you explain your proposed hours of operation? Is it just one time in the morning for drop off or is it any time somebody needs to come? It's continuous throughout the day. Uh, they typically operate from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. and that's five days a week. Um, so they're closed on the weekends. The peak hours, as we mentioned, are actually, um, the, it, it actually runs from approximately 12 to about two o'clock in the afternoon. That's really when uh, most of the people are there. Um, and then you have obviously the drop-offs between nine and 10. Um, the later pickups are, are fairly rare. Um, you know, usually the children are picked up typically around three to four o'clock at the latest. And it's okay, based so on the age too. Six to seven could be, well, the concern about Starbucks may or may not <clears throat> happen, but I think it's a legitimate concern. So, thank you. Yeah, and additionally, we'd like to add that it's, it's really staggered based on age and uh, the peak capacity of the teachers, it's, that's really kind of, uh, as I mentioned, the, that 12 to 2 midday. 
Uh, typically, I think that the staff that we're looking at here is, is probably averaging around 14. Okay, so you operate this really as daycare and not as a school. Correct, yeah, it is a daycare. Okay, thank you. Yep. Are there any other questions from the plant members of the Planning Commission? No, ma'am. No, nothing. nothing. No. Okay. We are <clears throat> going to open the public hearing and our moderator will call on individual telephone numbers if somebody wishes to participate in the hearing. Thank you. We do currently have callers on the line, but some of those may be waiting for the second item on the agenda. I will uh, call out the last four digits of uh, each caller's phone number, and if you're waiting for the next agenda item, please let us know. Otherwise, state your name and location for the record, and you'll have three minutes to comment. Uh, the first caller in my list has the last four digits of 5715. Would you care to comment on this application? And just a reminder to unmute mute yourself, you press which buttons? Uh, you press star six, although uh, area code 214 uh, with the last four digits 5715 is not muted. Okay. No response. Uh, the person with the last four digits 5602 All right, extension or last four digits of 8475. I'm waiting for the next agenda item. All right, thank you. Uh, the last four digits of 8070. Uh, yes, um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, uh, I'm calling on behalf, I believe, of Green Cross uh, caregivers. Uh, uh, yes, um, that sounds like it's related so. to the next item on the agenda. So we'll hear from you That's in a fine. little bit. Yep. All right. I'll put you on mute. All right, thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, next caller is last four digits of 8804. Yeah, this is Gabriel from Golden Meds. Okay, that'll be the next item probably. Uh, and finally, uh, caller with the last four digit, digits of 7693. All right, uh, 7693 just muted themselves, so I will assume that they are hoping to speak on the next item. That Hold is the, the next, next agenda item. All right, thank, thank you. you. That is the last caller we have. Uh, so. I uh, will turn it back over to the Planning Commission Chair. Okay, I guess we have no members of the public who wish to make comments, so therefore we will close the public hearing and bring this item back to the Planning Commission for a motion and discussion. Are there any other questions that you thought of that you would like to have addressed before we call for a motion? Okay. I hear no additional questions, so I will accept a motion regarding the proposed Copperleaf Kitty Academy. Madam Chair, this is uh, Commissioner Latsis. I'd like to make a motion. Very good. Commissioner Latsis, do you see it as it is written? Yes. So in the case of FDP 20-001, Copperleaf Kitty Academy Final Development Plan, I have reviewed the staff report, including all exhibits and attachments, and I've listened to the applicant's presentation and any public comment as presented at the hearing, and hereby move to recommend approval of this application based on the findings in the staff report, subject to conditions one through four. Okay, we have a motion made by Commissioner Latsitz. Do we have a second for the motion? I second that motion. Was that Mrs. Woolman? Yes, ma'am. Okay, <clears throat> Commissioner Woolman has seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Reynolds, please call the roll.
Commissioner Brockelman? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Saul? Aye. Commissioner Save? Aye. Commissioner Woolman? Aye. Chair Pro Tem Latsis? Aye. Chair Rick? Aye. The motion, the motion passes on a vote of seven to zero. Um, this concludes the Copperleaf Kitty Academy uh, agenda item, and we will now move on to the next agenda item. Okay, our next agenda item is we will consider case number LDC 20-003 a proposed recreational marijuana land development code amendment and Bill Skinner with Arapahoe County Planting. Planning is our staff presenter. Mr. Skinner, please begin. Mr. Skinner. Apology, I caught myself with the mute button. <laughs> so this is uh... Land Development Code case LDC 20003. Um, as Commissioner Rex said, this is a proposed amendment to the county's land development code. The Board of County Commissioners was approached at late 2019 by the owners of the four existing. Oh, apologies again. This was noticed in the villager. You do have jurisdiction to proceed. So moving back to the presentation. So this was the county commissioners were approached by the owners and operators of the four existing grandfathered medical marijuana dispensaries that operate in the unincorporated Arapahoe County environs. I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint for you if that's OK with Jason so you can see the bullet points as I move through them. And there we go. Can people see the marijuana regulation screen? Yes. 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 OK, thank you. <clears throat> so. Um, the county commissioners were approached by the operators of these dispensaries. Uh, they asked that the county consider allowing the sale of recreational marijuana at these four existing medical marijuana dispensaries. At the moment, or now, and ever since the board took action in 2009, these dispensaries have been restricted to medical marijuana products and do not operate under the state's adopted recreational marijuana sales provisions. Uh, we can see if the owners who sounds like some of them are on the line want to speak on their own behalf when we get to the public comment section. But uh, as the staff understands it, the medical marijuana sales are a shrinking bit in the market while recreational sales are increasing. This puts dispensary operators who are only able to access the medical marijuana market at a disadvantage against the retail sales operations. This is significant with the way Arapahoe County is a little bit of a patchwork quilt where we have small enclaves of unincorporated county areas completely surrounded by city jurisdictions, which may have different regulations. So you could have two establishments just, you know, a couple properties away from each other. One can sell recreational and the other cannot. You could see how that may be a disadvantage. Uh, the regulations have been crafted by a team that's been working with the Board of County Commissioners. It includes members of the Sheriff's Department, County Public Works staff, uh, County Legal staff, and they've come up with this amended language to the Land Development Code that will essentially remove uh, the prohibitions against recreational marijuana sales. There are in there are flat prohibitions against all marijuana land uses in the county, with the exception of these four grandfathered dispensaries that existed before those prohibitions were put in place in 2009. 
this will leave prohibitions against additional recreational or additional marijuana sales uh, facilities, but will allow the four we have to expand their uh, their product line so they can now do both medical and recreational. The fact that these are grandfathered, they're considered legal non-conforming. That means they don't conform to the current land development code, but because they existed before that code was adopted, they are legal. Because they're non-conforming, these facilities won't be able to expand their facilities. So we have these four, to lay this out by the numbers, we have these four locations. They'll be able to do both types of sales, but it's not like they're suddenly going to be able to double or quadruple their floor space. Uh, that would require something that's beyond what we're doing here. Um, so to get to the meat of this, uh, the board has asked it, the board's considering an ordinance that is not the purview of the Planning Commission or the staff that will accommodate recreational sales. What staff is bringing to you tonight, in the event the board does that, they're still considering it, though it looks like it's going to move forward. What the staff has brought forward to you tonight, and the language is uh, lengthy, so I won't go through it piece by piece, but it's in your staff report. Uh, changes to the land development code. If the ordinance gets adopted by the board, we need land development code regulations that will allow the staff to respond to that. And that's what the attorneys have written for us and what is in your staff report. I had a last minute communication today from one of the county assistant attorneys, and there is one change that's occurred since we published your staff report. In the amended regulations, the dates cited are the dates of the original regulations when all four of these operations were grandfathered, and that date would be December 15th, 2009. In the regulations that are uh, before you, that's going to change and it's going to reflect medical marijuana stores existing as of July 14, 2020. They wanted to move that date forward so it was more representative of what's happening now instead of relying back on what happened 11 years ago. Bill, if I could just add to that language, we'll now track what's going to be or what's being proposed for the ordinance that is going along with these land development code amendments. OK, thank you. So moving on record, that was Bob Hill, assistant county. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. So moving on, uh, something that you might have noticed was missing from your staff report. Typically, we include a list of the agencies that we referred this out to. Uh, in this case, the timeline was compressed. It's been under discussion at the board level since late 2019, but COVID came along, people got very busy, and then we realized we were nearing a, uh, a date of expectation that the board and the sales community had that is essentially this coming August. So staff moved with some speed and got everything together. We did refer out to all these agencies that you see on the screen in front of you. I had responses that came in during the last week after the staff report was published uh, from only seven agencies and only three of them had comments. Four of them stated emphatically, no comment, please continue. The three that had comments were Tri-County Health, they recommended what is somewhat traditional or standard in regulations like this, that uh, the facilities be sited more than 1,000 feet from schools, daycares, playgrounds, and youth-oriented land uses. We appreciate that, but we can't respond to it as they wish because these are existing sites. And in some cases, they are within 1,000 feet of these types of uses. But I would like to note that we've talked to the sheriff and they don't seem to be generating any problem. 
So we appreciate the concern from Tri County and certainly respect their expertise on this, but it's nothing we can respond to in this particular unique circumstance. Second concern is there are taxes that go along with these type of retail sales and Tri County asks that some of the taxes be earmarked for prevention and health considerations that may result from cannabis use. And the third concern is in the event there is any on-site manufacturing of edible products, they want the operators to be aware that the same concerns that would exist with a, a bakery or a restaurant that's preparing food for consumption would be concerns in this type of an organization, in this type of a facility. If I understand correctly, none of the four facilities are doing that kind of manufacturing, but Steph will confirm before we move forward to the board. The second organization that responded with concerns was the City of Centennial. They say they do not have any concerns. However, they would like to be recontacted and have a discussion if Arapahoe County were, decide, were to decide to adopt other regulations in the future that allowed for an expansion in either the number of sub facilities or the size of the facilities. But as we're not doing that at this time, that isn't a functioning concern. And the last agency that responded was the Rappo County Sheriff's Department, the captain of the narcotics team inside the Sheriff's Department, noticed the regulations don't include anything about how enforcement will occur, how inspection will occur, uh, or how resources will be allocated to take on any additional enforcement or inspection. Two of the members of the study session team working with the board, one is a captain in the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Department, the other one is a lieutenant in the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Department. I reached out to them with this concern and this will be more of a procedural or an operational concern that we will address inside the county's organization. And it sounds to me like the Sheriff's Department actually has an understanding of how they're going to do this. There's just some internal communication that will have to happen if these regulations are adopted. These are procedural or operational details and would not be a part of regulations such as these. So last screen is the map, which I hope everyone can see. We put this up simply to illustrate the four locations that exist in the county. And beyond that, uh, I believe that concludes my presentation. Staff is recommending support of this change in the regulations. We see them as necessary if we are to keep step with the board's ordinance. And I'm open for any questions. We can adjust the slides as you wish or however we can accommodate the commissioners. Please feel free to ask. Are there any questions from the commissioners for Mr. Skinner? Yes, so this is uh, Commissioner Latsis. And I have a question for Mr. Skinner. Uh, so Bill, it seems contradictory to me that if the county is not considering expansion of uh, these types of businesses that they would um, write into the land development code expansion of these four specific businesses. Can you speak to why, you know, four legacy businesses that would typically be limited to their exact operation today uh, are getting this consideration? I, I'll give it a shot. I'm not uh, part of the board's internal deliberations, but as I understand it, they want the four dispensaries to be able to remain functioning at useful businesses. Um, we wouldn't want them, we wouldn't want any business operating inside the county to be operating at a disadvantage to their peers that may be just half a block away. And I think since the board already had these operations on the ground working as medical facilities, the inclusion of a different product line within the same scope, size, and location didn't look like it would have major impacts. Okay, I do have a follow-up question. So you stated that um, 
some of these facilities are within a thousand feet of youth activities could be schools daycares whatever um is the county or the commissioners concerned that if these become recreational uh retail sales that you know their proximity is now more of an issue than it was when they were medical hmm. i don't believe so and i believe that's because there are age restrictions to you you there operate similar to a liquor store you can't go inside unless you're of age and from the outside you know from someone standing on the sidewalk a uh, customer slash patient patient coming and going through the front door is going to do the same things act the same way have the same basic set of uh of actions you wouldn't know if they were purchasing recreational or purchasing medical so that could be why the board didn't think this expansion was a problem in terms of proximity to those other locations uh, it was uh, specifically pointed out to me when this was passed to me having gone through the study session two different study sessions with the board that uh, the, the sheriff's department had been asked if these were creating problems and the answer was uh, a flat no uh, they aren't creating problems now and they don't anticipate the expansion to generate new or well new problems is the best way to put it but i do appreciate the question it's it's a good question thank you this is Commissioner Save, and I have a question I think is for uh, Mr. Hill. And uh, the, Bob, the question is, um, does this uh, proposed amendment in any way open the door for other uh, recreational sales of other uh, business, business propositions? Uh, could it possibly set any sort of a precedent for uh, future businesses to open? Uh, legally, no. The way it's drafted, it's, I mean, and if you even look at the code language, it's specific to these addresses that are allowed. And then they're only allowed as a non conforming use. They started out as a non conforming use. This code um, adjustment or amendment would, it, it, it expands their ability to transition to sell you know the retail recreational marijuana um, but it doesn't allow them any other flexibility than that so they can't expand in size they can't expand in location um, that would take actually the way i think the ordinance is is being drafted or is being pre presented as well as this land development code it would take a new code amendment for both the ordinance and this land development code to allow for that kind of expansion, whether it's these businesses or new businesses. Okay, thank you. This Are there is, any uh, other questions? This is Commissioner Miller, I have another question. Um, so when it comes to manufacturing items on site, whether it's baked goods or candies, they currently are not allowed to do that and there's nothing in the code to prevent them from doing it in the future or there is something in the code to prevent that from happening in the future do you understand what i'm asking i do understand what you're asking let me just take a look specifically i do not believe the regulations speak Bill, I think I can address this a little bit. Yeah, please do. Since if if those businesses are currently as part of their business uh, preparing edibles on site for sale, they may be able to continue to do that. Um, if they're not, and I, my guess is they probably are not, because that would take you know food processing as opposed to a retail store shop. But you know, if if they're not, they could, since they're non-conforming uses, that would be considered an expansion of the non-conforming use to expand into that um, 
production on site. And this is Jason Reynolds. Just you know, further clarification on the manufacturing. Uh, you know, uh, speaking with uh, Michelle Halstead from the county, uh, none of these businesses are manufacturing on site. It's purely uh, medical retail establishments. Okay, so that does, this is Commissioner Wolman, that does beg the question as to whether they can kind of wholesale, you know, get get a supply from another um, producer just to have a display um, within the store. Well, there's a difference between selling the edibles and manufacturing them or uh, cooking them. On, right. On. That's correct. That's that's why I'm asking the question. If they get from another supplier to be able to offer that um, to their, you know, to their patrons, um, would that be allowable? Yes, I think so. I yeah. presume that they are currently selling edibles as part of the medical um, inventory, and maybe the. We'll have some public comment that could speak to that as well. If I may clarify how that works with Tri-County Health Concerns, the way those regulations work, there's a significant difference for, say, uh, um, a convenience store in bringing in an item that's prepackaged for sale and heating or preparing the item before you sell it. So uh, the, I don't believe Tri-County has any problems with prepackaged prepared items coming in for sale. Uh, they wouldn't consider that the preparation or manufacture of those items. Okay, so, so I got one more question for you, Mr. Skinner, if you don't mind. So of the four facilities, how many are actually violating the thousand foot rule? Oh, good question, and I'm afraid I don't have that off the top of my head. I believe since that 1,000 foot rule includes um, youth oriented land uses, so that can be anything from a playground or a daycare or a school. You could even consider a church with a strong daycare program or something like that to be one of those uh, youth oriented land uses and looking at the map. I think it's possible that at least three of them may be in that situation now. Can't say about the fourth off the top of my head. Okay. So potentially three. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Mr. Skinner, I have a question. These businesses can start, if this gets approved, can sell recreational mar marijuana in addition to what they're already doing. If they wanted to relocate to a new location, could they do that? Or if they shut down their business and somebody else comes in to take over. Can they operate in the same location or is it just these four? The way they're set up now, they can't get any bigger where they are and they can't move to a new location. Uh, I can answer half of that question definitely and then I'll ask Bob about the reload about the sale stipulation. I know that the way these regulations are written, they not only include the address, if it's a multi-tenant building, they include the unit number, for example, unit G or unit 18. So. But it doesn't include the owner. Well, well, so I, I don't think they can expand and occupy adjacent units, but Bob, any thoughts on the ownership if the existing yeah, business under works? Our um, land development code, a non-conforming use is transferable. Okay. So they could sell it to a new owner so long as there isn't a significant gap in between that because the land um, 
a non-conforming use can also be abandoned and under our code, I think it's six months. Um, if it's abandoned for a period of six months, then they lose the right to come back in and restart up the non-conforming use. It is six months. And wow. then in addition, if they wanted to relocate to a different area, um, if it was in unincorporated Arapahoe County, we'd have to amend the land development code to allow for that, or they would have to relocate to a jurisdiction that allows the use. Okay, so that's part of the non-conforming use. Right. Okay, thank you. Are there just, any other just, questions? Just, Mr. Muller? I do have one more. Um, this is uh, uh, Commissioner Miller again. Hey, is there any um, um, restrictions on uh, hours of operation in the code or are they currently under e underneath any sort of uh, um, restriction on hours of operation? The proposed language does not have any restriction on hours of operation, though uh, being if, if in terms of hours of operation, we would view them simply as a retail establishment. Uh, I can't speak to the specific zoning on these four locations, but if say they were in some kind of a planned unit development that had an overall no 24 hour businesses can operate in it, these would be under the same restriction. They'd be treated uh, just like their adjacent retail companions, I suppose. OK, thanks. Are there any other questions for staff? OK. We will then, I guess, move on to the public hearing. And Jason, our moderator, will call on the individuals who have phoned in if they wish to participate. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. We do have callers on the line. Uh, and I will start with the caller in approximately the same order we had last time. Uh, the caller with the last four digits of 5715 will be first with uh, caller ending in 5602 on deck. Uh, caller 5715, if you'd like to speak regarding this issue, please state your name and location for the record and you will have three minutes to comment. Give caller 5715 one more chance to unmute themselves. This is area code 214. All right. We'll take that as a no comment. Uh, the next caller is uh, ends in 5602. Uh, please state your name and location for the record and you will have three minutes to comment. Uh, yes, hi there. My name is um, Aaron Matinan and my address is 3391 South Fairplay Street, Aurora, Colorado. I live in um, Arapahoe County and I'm the owner of one of the um, uh, shops uh, in Arapahoe County. Uh, I was listening to these meetings and um, yeah, and I have a lot of uh, patients that um, you know, come in and we know them for years. Um, they come in and uh, a lot of times they um, have tr trouble to renew their uh, medical uh, license to uh, either because uh, the doctor is unavailable or the charges they charge right now, it's a little excessive. And um, some of them could benefit, you know, keep getting the same kind of uh, product um, uh, we're the same kind of price without any hassle going to the doctors. Sometimes it gives them a little more flexibility. Um, and um, yeah, that's that's pretty much I want to you know add to. All right, thank you for your comments. Uh, the next caller is. Uh, has the last four digits of 8475. 
So please state your name and location for the record and you'll have three minutes to talk. Yes, uh, uh, Wendy Davis and 3460 South Poplar. I'm about a mile, maybe less from the Yale Street location. And, um, and I patronize them and have for a long time. And I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I have no expertise, but I think it would be fair totally. And I don't think it would really affect things that much. It might be a little uh, more crowded, certainly at times of the day, but um, I, I've noticed that the staff there, in addition to being very nice people, are very concerned about the rules. So I don't know, Those. that's really all I have to say. And, uh, you know, I'm here to just support uh, the people whose business I pay tonight. So thank you. All right, thank you for your comments. Uh, the next caller is, has the last four digits of 8070. Please state your name and location for the record and you'll have three minutes. Hi, good evening. Uh, Wesley Billstone. Um, I'm right on the border of Arapahoe and guess Devon counties. Um, I'm off of East Mississippi. However, though, uh, for jury duty, I get called to uh, Arapahoe. <laughs> so uh, I'm a surviving pancreatic cancer survivor. Uh, I'm 52 years old and uh, I moved here from Washington, D.C. about five, six years ago. And some of the medical establishments that you have are absolutely wonderful. However, you know, with hours and, and so on and so forth, um, I'm a patron of Green Cross caregivers on Parker Road, and they're close to my house, and there are some days I cannot drive um, just because I'm ill. But uh, I've been to that establishment now as a patient for three years, and there's a animal hospital there. It's a very quiet plaza. I don't see any problems with them trying to go to the recreational side, but it's also more convenient for me just because they are closed on Sundays. If I'm not feeling well on a Sunday, uh, I could go into that store uh, for recreational purposes, but I am a medical patient, patient and I know them very well and they were nothing but professional. Uh, they have security cameras up. I've been in there when uh, other uh, instances have happened in the parking lot there uh, with a pawn shop and you know they're so willing to work with uh, the officers and so on and so forth but I really do support uh, a recreational side uh, for Arapaho. Um, and thank you so much. Um, I've moved here to really save my life. So please, uh, please take this into strong consideration. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your comments. The uh, next caller has the last four digits of 8804. If you could state your name and location for the record, you'll have three minutes to talk. Actually, this is Gabriel. I'm the owner of the dis uh, current dispensary on the 2280 Quebec Street. I'm not a customer or anything like that. Okay. I'm just doing this meeting. All right. Uh, the uh, uh, I'm the just the owner of the Golden Mass Dispensary located on 2280 Dispensary. Okay. Uh, South Quebec Street and just the uh, Want this goes to the recreational that we can do a good job for our community. All right, thank you. And the last phone number I have ends in uh, the digits seven six nine three. Hey, good evening, uh, William McKernan, thirty two eighty Cherry Ridge Road in uh, in Inglewood, and I'm a Rapaho County resident. I'm also um, employed by Cure, which is the sixty two hundred. Uh, ECL location, uh, one of the dispensaries. But I just wanted to thank uh, the commissioners, for, uh, land commissioners, for their for their time. And I think um, Planner Skinner explained everything appropriately. Um, just for the record, there there is no manufacturing that happens in any of these dispensaries, so there's no need to worry about that. There's purely just retail uses, 
and this um, would just allow us to compete with a lot of the other recreational competition we have just, you know, surrounding us. And um, these four businesses have invested a lot of time and energy in keeping things going since, uh, you know, since for myself since 2009. So we appreciate your support, and I am just uh, wanted to state both as an employee and as a resident of Rapaho County that I was um, in favor of, uh, of moving forward with this. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And that is the last caller, so I will turn it over to the chair. Okay, are there any questions? Um, that is your last caller, so I guess we can close the public hearing and if staff has any comments to any of the comments that were made by the, pub by the public, and otherwise we'll bring it back to the Planning Commission for discussion and or emotion. Are there any other questions that anybody wants to bring up before we consider a motion? Yes, this is uh, Commissioner Latsis. I have a question. Maybe, Bill, you might know this one. Um, so as far as the locations of these four existing businesses, uh, do you have any data on you know, the proximity of competing businesses? Because they're all clearly close to either Denver, Aurora, you know, potentially Littleton, you know, wherever they're close to a city jurisdiction that may allow uh, recreational sales. So I guess I'm looking for what is their competition if they do this? And then my follow on question is, um, you know, I would imagine increasing to recreational might have additional costs as far as security and other considerations these businesses would have to take. And are they, you know, fully aware of that? And have, has that been part of any of the discussions? Okay. Um, two, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Well, that's fine. Those are both good questions. So the first question, uh, no, I do not have data on the proximity to other out of jurisdiction sales establishments. I apologize for that. It wasn't part of the materials that went forward to the board in the study sessions. But I have a more satisfactory answer on the second part of that. Uh, I was fortunate enough to sit in on the study session where three of the store owners had a back and forth conversation with the board and staff and uh, legal representation was there and we that question did come up. What are your plans uh, to take on the additional the additional products? So there are some pretty specific regulations on how these have to be set up. The two different sales streams cannot intermingle and the owners are aware of that. The level of detail that at least two of them went into about how they have to separate the cash flows, separate inventory tracking, and in fact, separate the sales spaces on the counter. You couldn't walk up to the same counter and buy one and buy the other, you know, as, as a customer. Um, we didn't speak about additional security cameras, additional locks or so forth, but I'm of the impression that the three operators who were speaking at that study session have considered this deeply. And I would say it's safe to say they are well aware of what their peers in other jurisdictions have to do, and they'll be on top of it. Thank you. The, the conversation gave me, uh, I mean, you've worked with me for a number of years as a planning commissioner, and you know if I have skepticism, I'll voice it. In this case, I have a fairly high level of confidence that these people are experienced and know what they're up against, and I'm voicing that. So, so excuse me just real quick. So can they then surrender or stop doing the medical side and do just recreational? I would say so. There's nothing in the regulations that that requires medical in addition to do recreational. So I believe they could. I will tell you that uh, one of the gentlemen who spoke tonight was Bill McKiernan, though I think I got his last name slightly wrong. Uh, we asked him that question as well at the study session. Uh, said, well, what's the 
what's the motivation and are you concerned that this will essentially run your medical side of the business off? And he was, he spoke at some length that they do have long established relationships with their medical customers and that, uh, and this was completely unbidden. He just started speaking about it and he says, you know, we're, we want to make sure that we don't make them uncomfortable in the stores if retail customers start coming in. So he didn't have all the answers that day, but it was another thing where they were, they were thinking long and hard about how to do that. But to speak directly to your question, um, no, nothing in the regulations requires one to have the other. You could have either separately or together. Thank you. Any other questions? Mrs. Woolman? No, I'm, I'm good. Um, thank you, though. Mr. Miller, are you satisfied now or do you have more? No, I'm good. Thank you very much. Any other questions from any commissioner? No. Or a None. No. Okay. <clears throat> then we will call for a motion. Madam Chair. Case. Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Woolman. I'd like to make a motion. In the case of LDC 20-003, recreational marijuana regulations, the planning commissioners have reviewed the staff report, including all exhibits and attachments, and have listened to the staff's presentation and any public comment as presented at the public hearing. I hereby move to recommend approval of this application based on the findings in the staff report subject to conditions. It should actually be conditions one and two. I believe there is a misprint there. Okay, we have a motion made by Commissioner Woolman. Is there a second? Commissioner Brockelman seconds. Commissioner Brockelman has seconded the motion. Any further discussion? Okay, Mr. Reynolds, would you please call the roll? Uh, Commissioner Brockelman. Aye. Commissioner Miller. Aye. Commissioner Saul. Aye. Commissioner Save. Aye. Commissioner Woolman. Aye. Chair Pro Tem Latsis. Nay. Chair Rick. No. The motion passes on a vote of five in favor and two against. Okay, thank you, commissioners. Well, I guess that brings an end to our public hearing items. And our next meeting is scheduled for August 4th. Are there any staff announcements? Uh, this is Jason. I do not have any. I don't know if uh, Jan Yekis has any. I guess Jan and she, she remains muted, so I will take that as a no. <laughs> Thank you. I, I don't. I was on another page typing, so I had to get back <laughs> to the team's meeting. <laughs> But I have no announcements. Thank you very much. OK, I guess at this point at 748, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you all. <laughs> Closing the live stream now. Good night, everybody. Good night.